right with regard to access control uh, and the, the various forms that we've been looking at, the various systems, we now come to sort of the holy grail of uh, access control, or probably authentication is, is more uh, uh, where this lies, um, and that is single sign-on. We, we want to be able to reduce uh, certainly the number of passwords that people have to remember, the number of uh, tokens that they have to apply to any situation, uh, but primarily we want to reduce the number of sign-on events of whatever type, the, the number of authentication events that are required in the course of normal work, a, a normal working day. We come in, we sign on, and we have access to whatever we need. And the authentication system should be able to deal with the uh, approvals, the, uh, the authorization, the um, accounting, uh, everything that, that is turned on that and, and the authentication that has been done, uh, possibly supported by uh, secondary authentication, which does not involve the user in additional work or interruption of their work or uh, tasks or uh, memorization or uh, additional cards, keys, whatever. All of that is handled by the authentication systems after they have signed on once. Um, this is, as I say, you know, so the, the holy grail of particularly authentication, but in terms of, of access control in general. And we have four basic requirements for any single sign-on system. I suppose before I get into that, I, I should mention an awful lot of companies are willing to sell you uh, single sign-on systems, which are not really single sign-on. Um, uh, there are an awful lot of systems that will sell you a single sign-on system as long as everything that you're running runs Unix. A single sign-on system as long as everything you're running runs Windows. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, they will say they're a single sign-on system, but they, they do not address everything you can possibly have or work with, and in particular, they do not deal with legacy systems. And that is, you know, I mean, if it doesn't handle everything, it's not single sign-on, because, you know, we a, a single sign-on system should be able to handle whatever we've got. You know, that that is true single sign-on. And unfortunately, uh, as far as I know, it does not exist. But, you know, that's the theory. That's what we're going for. Now, um, uh, like I say, four basic requirements that we have with regard to uh, the idea behind single sign-on. The first being, obviously, security. And we, you know, generally speaking, we are using single sign-on systems uh, not only in complex systems, but in, you know, by and large, over a network. So somebody, an attacker, an eavesdropper, should be able to read all the traffic going on on our network and still not be able to have enough information to successfully impersonate a user and counterfeit uh, the, uh, the authorization that one of our actual users should have. So, you know, uh, very often uh, we're looking at encryption of, of some type in, in terms of uh, transmitting uh, the various authorizations, uh, the authentication that may be going on with regard 
to this single sign-on system. Uh, reliability. We have to be able to rely on this. After all, you know, this is this is security. This is something that is uh, dealing with our authentication, our verification that this is a legitimate user uh, that we uh, will be able to uh, provide them with with access. You know, we have to be able to rely on this system. Uh, and it's going to be available anytime the users wish to use resources on the system. Uh, so reliable in, in both senses of the word, reliable in terms of not failing and in not causing us to fail, not uh, creating a denial of service situation uh, in our systems, on our systems. Uh, transparency, by and large, we want to ensure that the user is not aware, or certainly doesn't have to be aware, of the authentication that is going on here. And scalability. We have to be able to uh, ad address um, a, a number of users, a number of systems uh, that may be required. You know, all of our work should be handled on that. The size of our company, the, the number of our systems, the number of uh, different authentication events that may be taking place on ours. And, and uh, next time we will look at, uh, as, as one example of this, uh, Kerberos and uh, uh, also uh, public key encryption and the, the differences, the similarities, um, and uh, oh, the interesting attitudes. Uh, towards the technology that both of those involve.